Hi, everyone. This is Faith McDonald, Faith Joy Hooper McDonald. I'm honored to be a GAPN co-leader for South Sudan, and I'm so sorry that I can't be with you in person, but I am honored that Abby has asked me to share with you something of my experience in contending for sheep nations while working in goat nations from right here in Annandale, Virginia. First, let me give you some background. I've been doing advocacy for the Global Persecuted Church for over 35 years, beginning with the Soviet Union and Eastern Europe. I directed the International Religious Liberty Program at the Institute on Religion and Democracy in Washington, D.C. for 27 years, and since January of 2021, I've been the Director of Advocacy for Katartismos Global, which is a ministry in the Anglican Church under Anglican Bishop Julian Dobbs, a godly spirit-filled leader who with his wife, Brenda, is originally from New Zealand. Katartismos, pardon my Greek, is from Ephesians 4, 11 and 12 to equip the church for the work of ministry. And I equip the church for the work of ministry to the persecuted. And thanks to Dutch sheets, I learned the related Greek word katartiso, which can be defined as perfectly joined together or uh, mending as in mending nets or in full alignment as in a medical term for the skeleton of a body. The body of Christ is out of alignment if we neglect the persecuted or if we are not in unity with each other. That knowledge confirmed once again my call to contend for sheep nations and for Jesus' lambs in goat nations. In my years of advocacy, I have worked with good guys in U.S. Congress, as well as with churches, and on such legislation as the International Religious Freedom Act of 1998, the Trafficking Victims Protection Act of 2000, the Sudan Peace Act of 2002, and the North Korea Freedom Act of 2004. All of these were signed into law in the month of October, interestingly enough, um, and I have had a major focus for decades on Sudan and South Sudan, fighting for persecuted Christians in what was once Southern Sudan, and also for the Comprehensive Peace Agreement in 2005 that led to the establishment of South Sudan, and beyond that, for all of the persecuted people of Sudan. I'm also part of other groups and happy to send anyone interested information about any of them. These include most recently the National Task Force uh, to counter anti-Semitism and the African Jewish Alliance. I represent in D.C. a group called the American Association of Evangelicals, an alternative to the woke National Association of Evangelicals. Currently, we're helping push Megan Basham's great book, Shepherds for Sale, that exposes top evangelical leaders who have been paid with leftist dark money to push the leftist agenda and divide Christians. Also, I lead two other groups within the Anglican Church. One is the Anglican Persecuted Church Network in the Anglican Church in North America. We just had a terrific conference on the Global Persecuted Church in Arlington, Texas, called One Body, Hope for the Persecuted. Because our conviction is that when the body of Christ comes together, that's when we can truly offer hope to our persecuted brothers and sisters. The other group is the Suffering Church Network of the Global Anglican Future Conference, GAFCON, an alternative to the wider, less orthodox, global Anglican communion. Alternatives are an important tool in contending for sheep nations. When good institutions are taken over, then we need to form alternative groups to maintain godly principles while continuing to fight to restore the originals. 
I'm also a member of the Sovereignty Coalition, fighting against the agenda of the World Health Organization, the UN Summit on the Future, and other unelected globalist power grabbers to steal sovereignty from every nation. I'm part of the Committee on the Present Danger China and also of the Title IX Task Force to fight the Biden administration's enlargement of and expansion of Title IX, which used to deal with making sure that girls had equal funding for athletics and admirable things like that, and now is being used to push transgenderism into every part of government and beyond. I'm also blessed to work with some wonderful people in the Mordecai mission, led by Pastor William Green, and to be an advisor on global persecution, global Christian persecution, and other issues to the awesome women of Aglow International. I call them my prayer posse. I mentioned these things not to call attention to myself, but because I want to stress how all of these things are connected, global and domestic, sheep and goat nations. Satan uses both to attack the body of Christ and our effectiveness in sharing the gospel and bringing the kingdom. And Satan wants to destroy both types of nations. The global persecution that seemed so far away is now a reality on our own shores. So let me share some observations from my years of work. First, the identity of sheep versus goat nations. Most goat nations are easy to identify. We see their actions. The 2024 Open Doors World Watch reports that over 365 million of our fellow Christians worldwide suffer high levels of persecution, torture, imprisonment, and death. But it's possible by the grace of God, that a goat nation can be transformed. Disturbingly, so can a sheep nation. Speaking for the United States, we are in precarious times. In the past, God blessed us because of our support for Israel, and I believe because of our government particularly defending persecuted Christians around the world through such bills as I mentioned earlier. Now, other nations, God bless them, are doing much more for persecuted Christians than we are, such as my hero, Hungary, which is a beautiful sheep nation. Mm -hmm. Can a remnant save a nation's identity as a sheep? Even in the best of times, we often had to contend against the U.S. State Department in my work, and now secularism, moral decay, and hatred of Christianity have spread. Increasingly, Christians and others who speak truth or stand against evil are being persecuted in all the Western nations, as we know. We watched the canceling take place and the virtue signaling, and they have formed a new secular religion. Now we see both silencing and overt persecution of Western Christians, arrests and imprisonments taking place. Secondly, an important way to contend for the sheep nations is to make the sheep a priority. Revival is coming and revival is here. Praise God. And we must pray that in worldwide revival, that the Holy Spirit will infuse a heart of passion for the persecuted into the DNA of the church. My contending for sheep nations will always include this conviction. And I tell you a hard truth. This past Saturday, I was at the National Mall at the Million Women Esther Call to the Mall in Washington, D.C. It was a wonderful blessing and a powerful time of me moving both heaven and earth. We confessed and repented of many things on behalf of ourselves, our churches, and our nation. But there was no time of repentance for our neglect of our persecuted brothers and sisters. Do you know that only one half of 1% of all church giving goes to the persecuted? 
In Matthew 25, the Son of Man comes to judge the nations, and there is eternal punishment and eternal reward. But in Isaiah 58, one of my favorite passages, there is the promise for blessing here on earth, conditional on practicing the fast that God has chosen. God says, if you do these things that he tells us to do, focusing outside yourself and outside your own blessings, then your light will break forth like the dawn. There will be healing and you will be surrounded. God's righteousness will go before you and his glory will be your rear guard after you. So caring for the persecuted includes a blessing for us as well. As I mentioned earlier, the sheep nation of Hungary is caring for persecuted Christians. One way in which they symbolize that they have made persecuted Christians a priority is how every November they light up the historic chain bridge and other monuments in Budapest with red lights for the martyrs on what they call Red Wednesday. I couldn't figure out how to share my screen, but I did make a mug of one of the places in Budapest where they put the red lights every Red Wednesday. So hopefully you can see that. And I'd love to get one of Chain Bridge too. Thirdly, Contending for cheap nations will be more successful if we remember and honor heroes. Recently, I was at the Embassy of Hungary for a commemoration of the great Christian saint and hero, Cardinal Joseph Minzenti. Minzenti was in prison three times, first by the Nazis and twice by the communists where he was tortured to make him renounce his faith in Jesus and embrace communism, which he would not do. Now Hungary treasures him and other heroes that stood against communism, and thus they will not give in to socialism, Marxism, or any form of communism. One speaker at this event said something I've been thinking about ever since. If heroes are remembered, new heroes will be born. Within the churches in our sheep nations, we have heroes we need to remember. In the Apostles' Creed, we declare we believe in the communion of saints. And particularly, since I have had several dear friends who have recently been promoted to glory, I have been meditating a lot on the great cloud of witnesses and how the saints, heroes, and martyrs of the church are there, cheering us on as we continue to run our race on earth toward the prize Christ has for us. When young people, the teens and children who grow up in our churches, hear not only the deeds of these heroes, but understand the power of Holy Spirit that compelled them, that is how our young people will not only not leave the faith, but will become the courageous heroes of the church in their generation. And finally, we can be much more effective contending for sheep nations when we work as one. The enemy's troops in goat nations are working as one much more effectively than the church. Mm -hmm. But a song we used to sing based on Psalm 16 says, you give marvelous comrades to me, the faithful who dwell in the land. I thank the Lord for the privilege of having all of you as my comrades. Other parts of the body, Christians from denominations and faith traditions other than our own, but who love Jesus and are his disciples, who are obedient to his lordship and scriptural authority, are our allies, given to us as comrades and as a gift from the Lord. The more that we stand together, the harder it will be for Satan and those things humans that are doing his bidding to try to prevent us from being the kingdom here on earth, contending for our treasured sheep nations and working to see the goat nations of this world become the kingdoms of our God and of his Christ. 
I look forward to continuing to fight side by side with you all to see this happen in Jesus' holy name and in the power of his love. Amen. Blessings on the rest of your time together.